Hey folks, thanks for joining me as we continue our journey with this Tiger One by RFM with full interior. If you're just joining us, we've built this thing up, painted it, weathered it, chipped it, and now we're going to be adding some mud. We're going to do something a little bit different that I haven't done before. We're going to play around with some earth tones using oils. Let's do it. So we're going to start by painting our tracks that we built up a while back with some dark tracks. This just gives it a nice dark brownish tone to start with. And this is what we're going to use as our basis for adding earth tones later. So first off though, we're going to do some pigments. So I know I said I'm going to do oils and we're going to get into that. But this is my tried and true method for at least just getting the basics down on the tracks. So I start with track rust, which is just a dark rust color pigment and we're just going to kind of sporadically put this down. You would have seen me done something similar to this on the spare tracks for the tiger that I did a couple videos ago which again I'll have links for that in the description for you to go back and check out those other videos if you haven't been watching this series thus far. So next up we're going to use dark earth. We're just going to try to add in some earth tones to start with pigments. I know this isn't oils you might have come for oils we're going to get to that. But again, this is my tried and true method of just spreading pigments out all over these tracks. And this also helps cover up any spots that we might have missed during painting. Because, you know, as these things move and we put them down later, we want to make sure that there's no plastic color coming through. So the last one here I'm going to put down is Farm Dark Earth. Now again, this scene I'm going to be doing is going to be in the middle of a, a field. And this is going to be in a diorama, as I've mentioned many a times now, and it's going to be in a diorama with another tank. So if you want to see the next tank that I'm building, as well as the diorama that this is going to go into, don't forget to like, subscribe, so you don't miss out on that. Now, with that being said, we do have to add some more details to these tracks. So if we take notice here, our tracks are going to run with the run running gear. And these are steel wheels, which means we have metal on metal contact. These guide horns are going to need to be painted with a little bit of wear. So I like to do dry brushing with a silver color. And we can see how that looks like worn guide horns. Because those wheels are going to rub against those guide horns. That's why they're guiding them. That's how they're guiding them. We flip these tracks over and we're also going to do the cleats. Again with a dry brush. Now this might get covered up later during the earth tones. It's no big deal if it does. But we want to start this way. And you can see the difference before and after right here in this shot. Now switching over to gunmetal, which is just a slightly less shiny metallic color than I was using, I'm going to do the metal on metal contact for the steel road wheels to the tracks. Okay, so if you have steel on steel contact, you're going to wear, you're going to get some kind of a polishing effect, and that's what we're trying to create here. So again, we're just taking our brush and going over the areas where those wheels would be, and we can keep checking just to make sure we're in that area. Again, get it as close as possible. See what it looks like when it's done. So then we don't just want to look shiny, we're going to add in some Europe earth. This is just a nice dusty earth tone to kind of cover it up to make it look more like a flat steel polish and less so shiny. Then we're also going to take that Europe earth and go underneath the tank. Now, you're wondering, I said I'm going to do oils, I didn't do oils yet. This is because at this point in the project, I was not uh, using oils. I didn't decide to use oils till right after this step. And if you've ever used pigments, you can mix them with oils. So again, um, it, it was just it was just one of those things where I was like, you know what? I don't want to do pigments this time. I started using pigments. I didn't want to do it again because I've done pigments on all of my other tanks. Again, check out my other videos if you want to see my Panther and my T3485. I used pigments for all the weathering and earth tones. So I did want to try something a little bit different. So this was my step towards oil. I had these Alkid binders I wanted to try out, so I mixed it with some Farm Dark Earth, got a nice build up, and the idea was to mix up some mud and put it down. And this is kind of showing you how I got to the conclusion of oils. But this step wasn't the final step that got me there. Really, it was the uh, the step the step before I decided to make oils because I had this idea that I could use the alkyd binders and the pigments to kind of build up some kind of a mud effect. And, and to a, a, a certain point it worked, 
But the problem was I didn't get near enough volume. I could still blend it like I wanted to be able to do with oil paints. As you see here, I'm taking this light carrier type from VMS, which is essentially a mild enamel thinner and I'm using it to blend those edges so they aren't so harsh and we get nice soft blended edges of our earth tones and this turned out okay but it didn't have the volume that I wanted it didn't have the texture that I wanted so I'm just showing you that I did go through this whole process and as I was going through it because I thought okay I started down this path I'm gonna see it through and it, it was giving me some good results like here we can see the build up where we ripped off that that mud flap but look here it just when it dried I wasn't happy with it so I decided to go back to the drawing board and I actually whipped up this concoction now this has some oil paints in it has some pigments in it has some binder in it and it has some ballast in it so we've built up our own little concoction to give us some volume this is how I got to my conclusion of using oil paints because of how well this concoction went together how well it went down look at the volume J just look at that volume that we're adding into this with this little concoction this was just stuff i had in my in my tool bag my workbench if you will one thing to note here as you're doing this make sure your running gear still works so back to what i was saying i made up this concoction it works really well and i thought well if i use oil paints in this and binders and i can blend it all then why not just use this as the basis and then use oil paints to add the visual texture of the different colors and whatnot. Because, you know, if you use acrylics, you really can't blend acrylics. Like you're either there or they're not. Same thing with enamels. Blending enamels isn't always an easy thing to do, especially when you're using them for earth tones. It's typically, again, it's there or it's not. But with oil paints, it literally blends the colors together. So we're going to see where this journey took me. So, again, I'm just putting down all of this thick mud that I, I made up and you can see it's just the volume is there the texture is there it gave me what I wanted so here I wanted to show you actually how I mixed it up because I ran out near the end had to make a small batch so I used this fine ballast then I used some dark earth pigments and I used some alkyd binders and I mixed that together now I did put some oil paints in um, the first batch I didn't in this last batch because I was almost done and I remember I said I realized I can just use oil paints to blend it all together so I did put oil paints in the first batch, but not this last little batch. And you really don't see much of a difference in the way it performed. So maybe the oil paints weren't such a big part of the first batch. But the important thing is it, it led me to the end result here, which is I started to see the benefits of using the oils here. So again, let's finish up putting some great textures on this and take a look at it. Just, just look at that buildup. I mean, it looks real. Now granted... It's going to get covered up with the running gear in a lot of areas. And we might not be able to see it, but it, it looks good. I, I love the way this looks. And you and I both know it's there, and that's what's important. So these are the oil paints I'm talking about. I got some from Uptilung, Earth, and Light Mud to try to add a gradient. So I started off with a really dark gradient, and I moved to light, which typically you want to do the opposite. You usually want to start with your lightest tone and then work your way to the darker tones in the smaller areas. So I, I did it a little backwards, but again, it, it worked. It, it's one of those things where it's like trust the process. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that oil paint blend that I made, which was like a lighter earth tone, and I, I'm just blending it. So I'm just speeding this up so you guys can see how I'm just blending it with, with uh, mineral spirits, thinner, anything you have will work like that mineral spirits are thinner and look at that it looks like natural mud accumulation we even have like some staining in there because the colors don't just cover each other up like acrylics and enamels do it, it actually blends in you actually get a natural gradient from one extreme to the other in the colors um so like you go from this light to a middle grade to a dark and you see everything in between and it just gives you that realistic look to your mud doesn't just look like a couple different tones I mean look at that so I'm touching up the edges of the of the um, the upper hull here so then at this point the other thing that I want to add was speckling so I took three different tones of oils now again I just took these oils and I thinned them down with mineral spirits you can use enamel thinner any kind of oil paint thinner it, it, it'll all work odorless thinner is basically what you need and you just thin it down and just speckle it on I took that brush that I used to do the 
uh, hairspray chipping in the last video and I just put the thinned out oil paint on there and flicked it with my finger. There's another method we can use here and I'll show you that here in a moment but just to show the three different gradients going down and look at that end result. It's just beautiful. Realistic, beautiful texture, gradients. I mean, we got exactly what we want. It's a bunch of eye candy on the bottom of this tank. And again, even though it might get covered up, you guys saw it and so did I. So we have to do the same thing on the front. And this is a little bit harder. You can see I'm holding it with the tank with one hand and I'm flicking it with my other hand, like with my index finger. But again, we're getting the bottom of the spare tracks on the front of this tank. And again, this just looks great. Just getting those earth tones splattered all over there. It just looks so good. And you don't have to go with three tones. I just pick three different tones because again, these things are gonna blend together and you're gonna have this beautiful gradient of lights to darks. And even though when you look at it, you're like, wow, this seems really strong of a contrast. Once it dries, it, it blends right in. And I don't mean blends right in so much that you can't see it. I mean, it just looks natural when it dries. It just looks gorgeous. So again, I'm just showing you, I use the same thing, light mud and earth, mix them together. Now here, I put some more of that ballast in. You can see this has some volume to it because we're gonna switch over to the running gear, right? Now the, the lower hull is done, it's ready to go. And the tracks are done as well, obviously. So that really sets the tone for how we're going to do the rest of this tank. We use the same colors throughout the rest of this, the same kind of process. And it unifies how all the earth tones look. You can play around with the shading and whatnot. And like you see here, what I did is I went around this wheel and I, just on the outside. And then I used the blending technique to just blend it towards the middle. So you get that light, dusty tone in the middle. And you get the heavy texture on the outside. Now, the next step is to come in with that earth tone, the middle grade, let's call it, and blend that throughout this. And you can see, I'm wet blending because it's oil. It, 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 oils don't dry really fast to begin with, so you can wade in between if you want to, but I just finished off all the wheels and then went back and did this while it's still wet because you're going to blend it. And you can watch as I fast forward this, it's just gonna blend right in and I'm just using the oil paints and you can see how you have a gradient from the light to the darker and everywhere in between. Now, I mixed in a few different colors here to make the darker earth tone. Again, only oil. I didn't use as much pigment this time. I used like dark mud from the Tiling range and just mix it in very lightly. I didn't want to go too light because you can see there's a lot of contrast here. So now I'm blending it with the mineral spirits again to bring in that gradient. So we're going to have a very dark area. We'll have some of that middle grade area, the, the, the middle brown color. And then we're going to go to the light brown or tannish dust color in the middle. That just gives us a nice gradient over top of that ballast that's in there that makes it look like stones and mud and build up in there. And this is what they look like when they're all done. Looks really good. There's some variation there too. We don't need to make them all the same. Now, the other way to add randomness, as I've been doing so far throughout this build, is speckling. Speckling has become one of my new favorite techniques and it pairs so well with oil paints. You want randomness, use speckling. This is as random as it gets. Look how great that wheel looks. Now, we also want to add in some of this engine grease grime color. So th this is what it starts off as, and it's a little brown for my taste. So I mixed in some earth tones, and we made it look like a sludge. This looks like a greasy sludge. And we're putting this around the axle of the road wheel, like where the, where the wheel actually mounts on, because this would have grease inside of it and bearings and... Over time, that grease would either get pushed out from adding more grease in or leaks or what have you. And it looks really good. So it did that on a few randomly. And again, we're adding some visual variation to the wheels. So I still wanted to do some speckling in these areas where the side skirts were ripped off. So you can see I did the same thing. I took those three colors from earlier, the light the middle and the dark brown and I'm just speckling them on. Now obviously the dark brown came up the most, you know, came out the most. I will say as good as this does look at first, what it was lacking for me was the volume. Remember I said how I started down this journey, I didn't like the lack of the volume 
on the lower part of the hull. And again, as good as this speckling looked, it looked like it was just wet speckles of mud. And I wanted to add that volume because when we see that volume, it just adds a whole other layer of realism. I mean, look at the mud you see here in this image and look at the speckling. It looks good, but I need more. So uh, let's just table that thought for a moment because I didn't figure it out at that point yet. Now, I did want to add some dirt and stuff to the top of the tank because in the scene we're going to be portraying, we have a couple Shermans shooting at the tiger and the rounds are bouncing off, hitting the ground, and there's all sorts of dirt flying up in the air. So that's pretty normal, you know, in wartime. And it wasn't unusual to see dirt on top of tanks, especially in World War I tanks, of course, with all the grenades and whatever else was going off. But I wanted to add some, some texture up there, and I got a chance to use some of the diorama dirt from VMS along with their ballast freeze to put it in place. Now, one thing I will say is this stuff turned out a little bit browner and redder than I originally anticipated, so we'll come back to that. I did build these figures while I was waiting for that freeze to dry, so... We're going to come back to that in a future episode because I want to focus on the tiger for now. But if you want to see my journey as I paint those, don't forget to check out my Patreon. There'll be a link down in the description if you want to get some timely updates from my workbench and see how I build those before the next video. So anyway, I was building that crew while I was waiting for the freeze, the ballast freeze to dry on the diorama dirt. So after I got them built up, the freeze stuff was dry which I think is some kind of like clear PVA or something either way it dried and I was able to come back with the oil paints and cover up that dirt texture that I put down earlier now the reason I said about this being so brown or reddish brown is because the oil paints didn't completely cover it up so if anything I would probably would have gotten a lighter color or maybe put a little bit of an acrylic spray over it first I don't know let me know in the comments if you have any good ideas as to how I could have fixed up the coloring on that diorama dirt before I put these oil paints down because I, I'm going to cover it up and you'll see that here as I move along. But I feel like it, it was harder than it needed to be. So any ideas, leave it down in the comments. So after I put these oil paints down, again, this is like a light mud color, dusty color, let's, let's call it. And this is my substitute for what I would usually use like Europe Earth for. It's usually what I would do is use Europe Earth pigments and then come in and use thinner like I am here and make it look like a dusty, you know, dusty, dirty, lived-in tank. So we're going to do that with oil paints this time just to show that we can do the same thing with oil paints. So I put all this oil color down. It's only slightly thin. It's not as thin as when I was speckling it on. And then I'm coming back in with the mineral spirits or odorless thinner and just blending the edges so you don't have any sharp contrast and that's the nice thing again about oils is you get a nice blended edge unlike enamels where it's either there or it's not these oils give you a nice blended edge i also wanted to do these panels on the glacis so we're just going to show almost like rain streaks i would call these like rain marks dust marks because this is kind of like that, you know, the rain pulls that dust down on these panels and it gives you a nice streaking effect. So again, the ability for oils to be blended gives you the opportunity to use this both for dusting and for streaking. It's kind of like an all-in-one earth tone. Now granted, if it's thinned out the way I have it, it's a little bit harder to streak with, but you get some subtle streaks to start. Okay, and then what you can do, as you see here, is you, you put a few thicker dots of oil just straight out the tube of the oil paint down, just a few dots, and then you can turn it into a streak. And you can see, here's the results. I put a few dots down of just oil paint straight out the tube with a little, with a little brush, and then I'm just blending it with the odorless thinner on that brush. Now here again, you can see how you can see how thin this is. This is that first pass of stuff I've been putting down of the oil paints I've been putting down this entire time. It's pretty thinned out to start, and I'm just brushing it with thinner. And what it's this, what this is going to do is it's going to pool in certain areas, like along the edges of these fenders, which is where it would naturally pool because the water would kind of collect before running off. 
so you get this really natural rain effect with with this kind of even though it's a light mud color it gives you a nice rain effect so just wanted to show this again on the turret you can see how dark that dirt is underneath and i'm adding in the oil paints again i'm going to blend these all together make it look like rain marks and streaks and dust just build up over time and you can see I'm, I'm specifically putting this in areas around the edges of the hatches the edges of the turret here and what this also can let you do is build up visual contrast between certain parts of the tank model right so you can kind of draw attention to different parts because you have this outline if you will like take a look here at this grenade launcher tube we're gonna just put a little bit of mud light mud dust around there and then blend it and it actually makes it stand out off of the top of the turret a little bit more so the other thing i want to do is add some streaking on the storage box on the back so here we're going to show you, let me speed this up just a hair, so we can take a look at how we streak that with the oil paints. Remember, I just used oil paint straight out the tube, put a little dab on, take some odorless thinner with my brush, and just kind of shape it. You're going to have to shape it. It's not necessarily magic. You're going to drag it down and then shape it into place. And what I also found, um, if you remember back from the weathering video, I was having trouble doing any kind of like streaking or enamels over top of this zimmerit because I just wanted to run down the zimmerit. I found that the oil paints are so thick that they don't run. So you put a little dab of oil paint right on the corners where you want to have a streak. And then again, you have a brush that's just damp with odorless thinner. And you're going to be able to drag that down. And I actually got some really nice streaking effects over Zimmerit. So again, that's a huge check mark on the plus box, you know, the pro box for oil paints. Now, I whipped up some really thick stuff. Remember I said I wanted to have volume in my mud on the sides? Well, I found a little bag of plaster in my one drawer and I thought, well, wouldn't that be a nice trick? So I mixed some plaster into the same muddy color I made earlier. And I made it a little bit lighter brown, as you see. But that little bit of plaster mixed in with the oil paints and the binders worked. And I just put it on the end of my brush and I used my airbrush to blow air because you couldn't flick it off with your fingers. It's just too thick. But So I actually blew it off with the airbrush. And you can see I got a big clump here. And I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to fix that with a brush. And again, that's another beautiful thing. You just grab your brush and touch it up and fix it because it's an oil paint. It can be blended. It can be removed. And because we're putting this all down over top of some of that varnish we put on a couple of videos ago, we're not going to hurt anything underneath. So the last step, remember I said I wanted to cover up that kind of reddish brown color to the dirt that was up here. So I actually came back with a slightly darker tone of earth, again with oil paints. And I covered all that up, blended it all together with the thinners. Same process that we've been doing, but again, just adding some more visual texture in here. Adding some more gradation, I think is the right word for it. So, and I came back and did the same thing on the turret. Again, I'm just trying to cover up that little bit of like the reddish brown color of the, the diorama dirt that I used. So a little bit of a lesson learned there for me for a future build. So one last step though that I almost forgot was to do this part where we ripped the fender off of the front. So anywhere where there's no fenders on, that mud's going to come flying up, up, up there. So did this front corner as well. And I just, I love how this volume, this voluminous, if that's a word, the mud with the volume, I, the texture was just perfect. I just love how this turned out. So much better than just speckling with with, with um, thinned out oil paints. It just looks so much better. So at this point, we have that volume of mud added on there. We can put our running gear together, put our tracks on. And these tracks went on very easy. I was actually very happy with how well they went together. And one other step we need to do is blend it together with some speckling. So I didn't put any volume spec speckling on this, just the, the thinned out speckling. And this is just to make the tracks feel like they're part of it. So the other thing is, as I said, I put this scene, it's in a farmer's field. And so we need to have some mud in between the links. So I am just took some of that stuff that I was spraying on with the airbrush and the and the paintbrush earlier that was like you know, all that voluminous mud 
and put that on the tracks and then I also clean them out. So you got to keep the end of the tracks clean just because it looks, looks more realistic that way. So the last step I want to do is put some fuel stains here where we would actually put fuel in the tank. So I put a little bit of Europe Earth pigments. I know I said I was only going to use oils, but this works better with pigments and then this fuel stains enamel. It's just, this is too perfect. I, I'm not going to bother trying to make this out of oil paints. This just looks so great in the end. It just gives it that nice stained, dirty, grimy look. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all enjoy this reveal. And there's an extra special sneak peek at the end. So don't miss it. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe so you don't miss more content that I have upcoming for you all, and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I want to hear from you guys. If you have any questions, you have any feedback, let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to get in contact with me on a more regular basis and maybe even see some awesome pictures from my workbench on a daily basis, check out my Patreon. It's really easy to get started. I have a free trial available for you guys, and if you want, you can support me there, and I'd appreciate it. So, a little sneak peek for you guys on the next build. We are going to be making the Sherman by RFM with a full interior, and as a bonus, we're going to be making it into Fury. As you guys have known on this channel, if you've been watching this series thus far, I've told you guys that we're going to be putting that tiger in a Fury scene. And we have this kit to make fury. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on this.